everyone, it's Amber Beltran again, and I have a really fun project planned for the next video I'm going to do where I'm going to be focusing on um, a soap frosting recipe and concentrating more on um, showing how I pipe the top of a cold process soap. And so what's a... Um, a good pipe top soap without some awesome embeds. So I figured it would be really fun to show you how I make my melt and pour embeds that will go on top of my cold process soap. Um, for the project that I plan on doing, I want to use this lovely Leaves fragrance oil from Nature's Fragrance. I used it last year, this around the same time of year, and it's incredible. So I'm really excited to use it again. Um, in another autumnal project this year. Um, so I'm going to get the embeds ready for that today, but I wanted to first quickly talk about the type of melt and pour base that I use to make my embeds and why I enjoy this particular base most. So I live in Florida and any soap maker who lives in a humid climate can tell you that this can come with some challenges. And so for me and my needs and wants, um, the best melt and pour soap base to use for embeds that will go on top of cold process soap is this um, low sweat detergent free SFIC base, or as some suppliers call it LCP or like cold process melt and pour soap base. So this base is ideal for several reasons. Um, number one, it really is low sweat. So due to the lower glycerin content, um, it produces less glycerin dew or sweating, and it doesn't need to be wrapped right away, which is great for cold process soap that needs to cure for four weeks. The second reason why I like this base is because it's a very, very hardy base. So I've used some bases in the past that actually remelted on me when my cold process soap decided to get hot on me during saponification. And that left for a giant mess that ended up ruining the entire design of my soap. Um, with this base, I'm able to insulate my cold process soap the way that I prefer to, and the embeds don't remelt on me, they stand up to the heat. So my soap can get hot and these embeds will last. Um, the third reason is that it melts down very easily and it accepts color beautifully. Um, number four, it sets up fast and it unmolds from any type of mold that I use really, really easily. So if you're making full size melt and pour soap bars and you want a base that'll give you a lot of time to work, this might not be the best base for you because it does set up fast, but for embeds, this is very ideal because I'm able to get my embeds poured, they set up, and they're unmolded in a matter of um, minutes. Number five, why I love this base so much is the texture of the base is perfect for embeds. So um, some bases that I've used in the past, um, they can feel sticky or tacky or sometimes rubbery to the touch, especially if you accidentally overheat the base or you want to pop it in the freezer for a couple minutes. Um, but this base has never felt sticky or tacky to me at all. Um, the embeds always come out rock hard and I'm able to pop this base in the freezer for a few minutes and my embeds never feel sticky or tacky to the touch. Number six, it lathers great and it feels really good on my skin. So it's the perfect accompaniment for cold process soaps. Um, the embeds made with this base produce a lather and feel that most closely resembles the feel and lather of my own cold process soaps. So I really like that. So it took me a lot of time and energy and money to find the base that worked best for me and what I wanted out of my embeds. So for me, this base has just been the superior choice. Um, but if you try this base for embeds and you find that it's just not the right base for you, give some other melt and pour bases a try until you find the one that you love best. But um, for all that being said, let's get started on making some so I have gone ahead and I've already chopped up a one pound block of the base into smaller pieces. So this is ready to go. And then the next step will be to choose the type of um, mold that you'd like to use. So you can use things like this, like plastic candy molds work great. Um, Multi-cavity silicone molds. I found this at my local Walmart for less than five bucks. Um, these plastic embed molds, yeah, plastic embed molds, they're, they're like, a, they're actually candy molds. I found at Sweet Treat Supply for under two bucks a piece. Um, 
you know, more multi cavity. You can go on Etsy molds. and find these little single cavity molds that'll give you a little more intricate detail. Um, they cost a little bit more, and you have to keep in mind that with single cavity molds, you're going to have to make your embeds one at a time, which can be more time consuming, especially if you don't have the money to buy multiple of the same mold. So, you know, pros and cons to everything. Obviously, the plastic candy molds won't last as long as silicone will, but the price is really great. So there's so many options that you can choose from to make all kinds of embeds on a budget or um, just go shopping to your heart's content, whichever, whichever you prefer or your budget will allow. But you can definitely find all kinds of molds at an awesome price. There you go, knocking stuff over. So today, because I'm going to be using Nature's Fragrances, leaves fragrance oil. I'm going to be using this really cute um, acorns and leaves uh, plastic candy mold. So let's get started on making some really cute embeds with this mold. For me, the funnest part about making uh, melt and pour embeds is picking my colors. Now there are several ways that you can disperse your colors into your melt and pour soap base. I like to use mica colors for my melt and pour soap and um, you can either disperse a little bit of the mica in a bit of rubbing alcohol Another option is you can disperse your mica in some a little bit of glycerin or you can just disperse the mica in the base itself. So basically adding the mica in dry to the base and letting the base disperse it. Um, I prefer to do it that way, just personal preference though. So if you prefer to pre-disperse your mica in either rubbing alcohol or glycerin, totally fine. Um, but several different um, stirring tools that work well, because you are gonna want to um, stir the color into the base really, really well, is you can use one of these handy dandy little stirs, and I got this actually from a um, painting set at the dollar store. Um, you could use the handle of a long micro scoop type thing, or you can even pick up a package of um, popsicle sticks. I also got this at my local dollar store and use a popsicle stick to stir the mica in too. All work really well. So, step one will be to weigh out the um, melt and pour base that I need for this mold. And I like to use, since I'm not melting down a large amount of melt and pour soap base, these little plastic beaker cups work great. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the melt and pour soap base weighed out and I'll bring you back when it's time to melt it down and add the color and get it poured in the mold. So for this particular project, I want each bar of soap to have one of these acorn embeds and two leaves. And each leaf on, or one leaf on one side is going to be a pretty red color and another leaf on the other side of the bar is gonna be a pretty green color. So I'm gonna have to use this mold twice to make 16 leaves and then just once to make eight acorns because the batch I'm making is going to produce eight bars of soap. Um, but first things first, I'm gonna pour the first set of the leaves. So I'm gonna get the melt and pour soap base melted down. I'm gonna stick it in the microwave for about 15 seconds. Keep an eye on it because it might not even need that much. You just wanna melt it down to where it just melts down, not boiling over or anything like that. If it boils over, it's too hot. So let me get this in a microwave. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, but I'm gonna stick it in for about 15 seconds. Okay, I lied, so it needed about 30 seconds, but it's nice and melted down now. So now to add the color. My first color that I'm going to use is um, this mica called Brick Dust. It's a really pretty burgundy red color. Sparkly and pretty. Thought that would look nice with our leaves theme. So I'm just gonna grab one of these little, I'm just gonna grab this one. One of these mica scoops works great. Add that directly to my melted soap base. And I'm just going to take my popsicle stick here and I'm going to pour it, or I'm going to stir it. I'm not going to pour it, I'm going to stir it. So I used my handy dandy popsicle stick to stir in the red mica. And now I will pour it into the individual cavities. Whoa. Got 
a little bit extra. Melted a little bit more than what I need, so I'm just gonna pour the remainder in a extra mold, and this will be used for a future project, I am sure. Okay, so I have my leaves poured, and if you ever come across a little bit of air bubbles hanging out on the top of your soap, don't panic. Spritz of rubbing alcohol will pop those bubbles instantly. So I'm gonna let this set up a little bit and I'm gonna, we're gonna get the acorns poured next. So I went ahead and weighed out a little more of my melt and pour soap base. I'm gonna get this melted in the microwave. I'll probably I'll stick it in for about 30 seconds this time and just keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't get too hot. So my melt and pour soap base is now nice and melted. I'm going to get the second color and for the acorns, I thought, um, let's see, oh, here it is. I thought this fire cider color would look nice for the acorns. So I'll do another scoop of that. Put it into my melt and pour base. And stir it in really well. So my rich golden reddish brown is all mixed into my melted melt and pour soap base. So I'm gonna pour this into the acorn portion of my mold. You don't have to worry if you splatter it all like I just did because you can just pick that off when the soap sets back up. It'll be just fine. Perfect. again because I haven't taken the time to actually weigh out <laughs> how much melt and pour soap base this particular mold needs so I'm just going to pour that off into my little mold here where it'll get used for a future project but for now this is all poured I'm going to give the acorns a little hit with the rubbing alcohol to pop any air bubbles on the top I'm going to let this set up a little bit once it sets up to a point where I can move the mold without um, any wrinkles forming on the top of it. I'm gonna pop it in the freezer for a couple minutes and I'll show you how easy it is that these um, embeds will just pop right out of this mold. So I'll bring you back when it's set up to that point. Okay, so my embeds have been sitting for about meh, four or five minutes now. It's gotten to a point where the melt and pour soap base has developed a nice skin over the top of it. It's setting up really nicely. And it's also gotten to the point where I can move the mold without it um, shifting and wrinkling the tops of my embeds. So I'm going to move this carefully over to the freezer. I'm gonna pop it in the freezer for about three minutes and then I'll come back, I'll show you how easy it is to just pop these babies right out of the mold. All right, so I've just pulled out my little embeds that I poured into the mold. I pulled it out from the freezer. I let it sit there for about three minutes or so. And now we're just gonna pop these out of the mold. So you just apply, apply a little bit of pressure and boop, it just pops right out. A little bit of pressure, pops right out. Acorns are out. I'm going to pop out the leaves. There we go. And then with just a light rinsing of water, the molds are ready to go for next time. And now we have our embeds. So we have our beautiful burgundy red leaves and our kind of bronzy brown acorns. So next I will get the other half of the leaves poured and in situations like this, 
You see I've over poured it a little bit. That's no, that's no problem at all. You could take a, a knife like this and just trim it off like so. Or in a lot of cases, you could just take your finger and pull it off too. trims right up no problem and I will probably do the same for this one too looks like it got over poured a little bit no problem just take a knife and trim the edges off so I'm gonna do that and then I'll bring you back when we are ready to pour the second half of our leaves okay so remember not that long ago when I didn't really know how much capacity my mold held well, a good way to figure that out for future use on a new mold is to make one piece, take that piece, and weigh it out on your scale. All right, so that one piece weighs 0 0.20 ounces, so you just take that weight and you multiply it by how many pieces you need, and that'll tell you how much melt and pour soap base you need to weigh out. So now that I know that, I'm gonna weigh it out correctly and get the amount I need to make the second half of my leaves. All right, so I've weighed out the amount of melt and pour soap base that I need. I'm gonna get it melted down in the microwave. All right, so that took about 25 seconds to get this melted down. And my next color for the leaves is going to be this beautiful, let's say, apple moss green. So it's a nice autumnal green color. So once again, I'm going to grab my little handy dandy scoop. Get that added. I'm going to take my fancy popsicle stick and get that nice and stirred in. So my green mica is nice and dispersed into my melt and pour soap base and I'm going to pour it into the mold. And this time, because I weighed it out, I didn't waste any extra melt and pour soap base, so that's good. Get a light spritzing of rubbing alcohol on All right, so these are all poured. I am gonna do the same thing like I did before. I'm gonna let them set up a little bit, then I'm gonna pop them in the freezer for a couple minutes, then I'll bring you back when these are ready to unmold. All right, so the green leaves are ready. I just took them out of the freezer. They've been in there for about three or four minutes. So again, I'll just apply a little bit of pressure and they just pop right out, just like that. Super easy. A little bit of pressure. Some even fall out that I haven't even pressed on yet. It's that easy. All right, so they're all popped out. And again, quick rinse with water and this will be ready to go for next time. So I've got all my embeds made. Got, again, right here, a little bit of overflow. That's totally fine. Just take this knife and just trim it up. There we go. Looks good. Okay, so I have my embeds made, and this is sort of how I'm gonna place them on top of each bar in the next video. Um, and you can stop right here when you've got them all poured and use them for your cold process 
soap project or you can add a little more pizzazz or dimension to them if you'd like by doing even a little bit of mica painting and I kind of was wanting to do that because um, especially like fall leaves they're never just one color so I thought I'd share a little bit of the mica painting that I want to do on these bad boys so too. this part is totally optional you don't have to do this if you don't want to but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a gold accent to my leaves and then just to the very tops of my acorns here I'm going to add um, a darker brown accent so to do that Just grab one of your embeds. I got this paintbrush set at the dollar store, so in very inexpensive. Cost me a whole dollar. And just gently dip the um, paintbrush into the mica, directly into it. Give it a good tap so it doesn't pick up an excess of it. And then you just paint it directly onto the embed dry. I'm just going to do a little bit of just, just a tiny gold accent on each one. Just to give it a little extra sparkle and kind of bring out the detail in the leaf a little bit more. So, and that's all there is to it. So we'll do a green one now. So again, dip the brush directly into the mica, give it a tap, and then just paint it directly onto the embed. And it'll stick right on it. It won't come off until um, you actually use the soap in the shower. And then there's the green leaf with just a little bit of gold mica painted onto it to give it a little extra dimension and sparkle. And then for my acorns, I'm going to use this uh, mica. It's called Latte. It's like a sparkly, nice sparkly brown color. And just do the same thing. Grab my embed. Dip my brush into the mica. Give it a little tap just paint the tops of that. Like so. So it just gives it a little more dimension to the embed. So that way when every embed is mica painted, it'll just have a little more autumnal pizzazz going on to it. So I'm gonna finish up painting the rest of these embeds. And um, in the next video, I am so excited to be doing this project with Nature's Fragrance Leaves Fragrance Oil. Like I mentioned, I used it last year um, in my autumn soaps and I absolutely loved it. Um, again, it's one of my favorites, so of course I was so excited to be using it again. Um, I do have a bar of this that I made last year, so saved from a year ago, that it still smells as amazing as it did the first day I made it. So this is just one of those times of years that I absolutely love and I'm so excited to, like I said, be using this wonderful fragrance oil again. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be focusing more on um, the actual piping of the soap itself. And I'm gonna be giving you guys a soap frosting recipe that you can use if you wanna start piping the tops of your cold process soaps too. So stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Nature's Fragrance for giving me this amazing opportunity. And yeah, we'll catch you guys all next time in the next video. Bye.